Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna be talking about perlite versus vermiculite, what they are and which do I personally prefer. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you miss out on any future videos. Also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also, don't forget, if you wanna come and sesh with us, check out our grows and just chill with us, follow us, on Instagram. Link to that will also be in the description below. So now, if some of you guys saw the photos on IG, we're actually going to be running something a little bit different. We're going to be running, as you guys can see over here, I actually was able to get some Gaia Green from my hydroponic shop, and it's crazy. There's been some controversy that, you know, I got Gaia Green because I'm trying to copy other big content creators and other growers, but that can't be further from the truth. Actually, I went to the hydroponic shop literally just to get pro mix because I'm completely out of pro mix and you know, they only carry a few bags. So I had to go in there and I figured, you know, I had to drive an hour and 20 minutes to kind of browse around, see what they got in stock. And I saw a little bit of Gaia Green. And I mean, it was pretty cheap though. It was $22 each of these. This one's 22. Oh, and this one is $18. So I mean, that's still not bad. So I'm thinking about giving some of this stuff away on like a giveaway from Patreon. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you guys want to do. But anyway, listen guys, nothing I do on the channel is ever influenced by any creator. Everything that I do that I show you guys is literally just either stuff you guys were raving about or I just happen to see it in the shop. I'm not influenced by any content creators as great as they are. You know what I'm saying? Actually, for the next grow, I didn't mention this even on Instagram. We're going to be, because some of you guys asked if I can do this. Gaia Green versus Down to Earth, right? Could you imagine that? So I think we're gonna be running four plants with the Gaia Green stuff and then four plants with the Down to Earth stuff and just kind of see how it goes. I mean, the Down to Earth stuff is really good. A lot of you guys are raving about the Gaia Green, so I just wanna try them both out, you know what I'm saying? All right, so I just wanted to make that whole thing completely 100% perfectly clear. So on to today's video. You might not know this about perlite, but it's actually volcanic glass and what it does is it improves soil structure by giving you good drainage and aeration. And one thing I gotta stress is that if you're using perlite, make sure that you wash it. Don't just rip the bag open and start using it. If you don't know what perlite is, it's the white particles in your soil. If you've ever wondered what that is, well, now you got your answer, right? It's an excellent amendment that helps to improve soil structure, like I just said. And I mean, it's a game changer when it comes to your plant's health. And it could be the difference between getting root rot and not getting root rot. It can be the difference between getting waterlogged and not getting waterlogged. So yeah, it's kind of a big deal. All you Minecraft fans, listen up. Perlite starts as obsidian, and now I promise you that perlite will not get you into the nether, okay? Well, maybe. So a lot of you Minecraft fans will definitely appreciate this, and what happens is, even in the game, you gotta take the water and wet the lava, and that's what it turns into, so it's a naturally occurring volcanic glass that forms as lava cools down. That's how you get the obsidian in the game, that's how it is in real life, too. When obsidian becomes hydrated, the water is what causes it to turn into perlite. So even in Minecraft, obsidian is straight up black Blacker than coal, so it's not like that's all it takes for you to get the perlite that you'll find in the hydroponic shop. This process releases trapped water and causes the glass to expand up to 20 times its original size, and it's got like this popcorn thing going on, all right? Pop. Don't mind me, guys, I'm still getting over this cold. I actually got a cold probably from the moving. It's really cold out, going from hot to cold, hot to cold, so just bear with me, guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like I got sick more this year than I've ever gotten sick. I usually get sick maybe once every two years, so I don't know. Next question that you might be wondering is if perlite would be considered an organic amendment, and I guess yes and no, depends on how you look at it. It's considered an inorganic substance only because of the lack of carbon in perlite, but at the same time, it doesn't contain any unnatural additives. So I guess it kind of sounds like an oxymoron, so it's pretty much up to you if you consider it an organic amendment. Let's talk about what perlite does for your soil, and I could think of four things off the bat. Like I mentioned before, it enhances drainage, it improves aeration, it's pH neutral, and reduces compaction, and when I say pH neutral, I pretty much mean that it's not going to mess with the acidity or alkalinity of your soil. Now the problem with perlite, and it's like I was talking about in the beginning of the video, it's crap for the environment and has dust particles, which is why I said that you always have to make sure that you wash your perlite before you use it. So I know a lot of people
people, you know, they watch videos. Oh yeah, I gotta get Perla, I gotta get Perla. And, and they don't wash it, so I'm telling you guys right now, make sure you wash it. These particles can irritate your eyes and throat, so if you're gonna be working with a lot of perlite or even any amendment, always wear gloves, always wear goggles, and just keep yourself safe with personal protective equipment. Like I always say, safety first. Those of you wondering how much perlite you should use, it really depends on the drainage of your soil. It's not like there's a one size fits all kind of deal. I like to add about 20% perlite when I'm working with strawberry fields. I don't add any perlite on ocean forests and I add maybe 5% when I'm working with ProMix because ProMix is pretty good aeration off the bat anyway. So it really depends on the soil that you're running. You don't want to give too much perlite or the water is just going to run through your soil and you'll end up just wasting and you know pretty much getting rid of all your nutrients. So try not to go over 20%. Now let's talk a little bit about vermiculite. We've been talking a lot about pH and it's got a lot in common with perlite. It's good with neutral pH and holds on to nutrients pretty damn good. Now the difference is perlite is more porous, making it a little bit better with drainage and aeration. Now that's not to say vermiculite is not good for drainage and aeration because trust me, it is. It contains calcium, magnesium, and potassium, and that's the big reason people prefer vermiculite over perlite because you get the best of both worlds. You got good drainage and aeration, and you can fix any cow mag issues while at the same time supplying your plants with some potassium. It's kind of a win-win here. And it's also unlike perlite. It's non-toxic and perfectly clean, which means it's not gonna get all moldy and deteriorate. Now, what do I use? A lot of you guys have watched my grows, all right? You know, I've never really used vermiculite. I've used it, oh, I've used it a lot in my earlier grows, but I'm more of a perlite guy. Now there's nothing wrong with vermiculite, okay? It's just a preference kind of thing. And I always give my soil crab meal, Epsom salt, and alfalfa meal, so they're not getting a lack of cow mag or potassium. I just kind of give it to them in a different form. Now remember guys, there's not one right way to grow. I can't stress that enough. A lot of people think, you know, there's only one right way to grow. That, that can't be further from the truth. There's so many different amendments and options out there. You know, so many different companies, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you gotta try this. Oh, this is the best stuff. Listen, there's not one thing that you could say is like the best stuff, okay? Some of you guys might agree with me, but you know what? I don't care, but then again, when have I? We can all use different things, have different approaches to growing, and we can still achieve success. And it doesn't matter how we get there, as long as we actually do get there, and as long as the final results are good. As far as the next grow, in case you guys have been living under a rock or sleeping through the last few videos and too lazy to get on Instagram, we're growing two mandarin cookies, two triple X's by Ethos. I'm running a blueberry crossed with a white widow and a lemon tart that one of you guys sent over to me, and two agent orange oranges from ILGM. So we're gonna be running a whole bunch of different stuff. So be sure to be following us on IG. That's pretty important if you wanna follow along with the grow. All right guys, so I feel like we covered a good amount of stuff. I kind of give you an update on what's going on with Instagram, with you know what we're gonna be using for the next run, the Gaia Green versus the Down the Earth. I think that's gonna be one heck of an amazing series. You know what I'm saying? But before I close off today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen for supporting us on Patreon since February. I really appreciate the love and support, guys. So I'm gonna close off today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.